Would Billy Kilmer's pinpoint passing be enough to overcome the hard-hitting Vikings' defensive play? Bud Grant and George Allen's teams met again in the postseason. The previous time was in 1973 when the Vikings won 27-20. The Vikings again played host, this time in a warm 31 degree temperature with a light 7 mile per hour wind. The Vikings were favored to win by 6 points. Number 59, linebacker Matt Blair started out as a middle guard for Iowa State but made All-American in 1973 as a defensive back. In the first half, the Vikings defense repeatedly made the Redskins receivers pay. Ultimately, they got to Kilmer, too. And the running game wasn't going anywhere. Tarkenton moved his troops to a quick 7-point lead on this 18-yard toss to Stu Voigt. Mark Mosley cashed in on a long 47-yard field goal for the Redskins, but Tarkenton countered with this acrobatic 27-yard touchdown catch by Sammy White. He beat Hall of Famer Ken Houston on the play. Sammy White caught 10 touchdowns in 1976 and was named the Offensive Rookie of the Year. He made the Pro Bowl his first two seasons, snared 50 touchdown passes, and collected 6,400 receiving yards. He had a very solid career. Normally reserved, Minnesota crowd, going wild. Redskins kicker Mark Mosley made a 35-yard field goal, but Tarkenton fired a 9-yard scoring strike to Sammy White. <laughs> it's time to give props to Vikings guard Ed White, who had a great day. He was a middle guard on defense at Cal and made All-American at the position. Although he made four Pro Bowl teams, he maintained that he could have been even better as a defensive tackle. The guy knew his skill set, so you gotta believe the man. In the fourth quarter, Billy Kilmer threw short touchdown passes to Frank Grant and Roy Jefferson, making the final score 35-20. The Oakland Raiders' only loss in the regular season was at the hands of the New England Patriots, 48-17. New England ran for 296 yards and played with... Harold Stingley's catch set up the game's first touchdown, an Andy Johnson one-yard run. Kenny Stabler hooked up with Freddy Belitnikoff for 22 yards on this play. He hooked up with Cliff Branch for some more.
And number 34, Prentice McCray could not hold on to the ball. The Raiders settled for a 46-yard field goal by Earl. Just 45 seconds remaining before halftime, Snake and Freddie B hit pay dirt with his 31-yard score. Steve Grogan hit Russ Francis on a slant pattern that was good for a 26-yard touchdown. It was no good. In yard line. It wasn't roughing the passer, Hamilton insisted. I tipped the ball. The films will show by the way the ball went that I tipped it. There's no way the official can call that. I know I tipped the ball, Hamilton reiterated. I tipped it, and my momentum carried me into him. But the official said I was trying to elbow him in the face. That's not right. But I'll admit I knocked the hell out of him. All I know is that we got the raw end of it. Five plays later. Baltimore Colts had the NFL's highest scoring offense with league most valuable player Burt Jones at the controls and speedy Roger Carr at wideout. They were going up against Pittsburgh's vaunted steel curtain defense that only gave up 138 points in 14 games. The Steelers had shut out three of their last nine opponents. This Roger Carr touchdown was only the second touchdown allowed by the Steelers in the first quarter in their last 30 games. Lydell Mitchell was awesome in the regular season, 1,200 rushing yards and 555 receiving yards, but he only had a total of 97 yards in this game with no touchdowns. On the Steelers' third play from scrimmage, Terry Bradshaw and Frank Lewis got together for a big 76-yard connection. Bradshaw was completely recovered from wrist and neck injuries and was quoted as saying, This did a world of good for my confidence. Franco Harris rushed for 122 yards in the first half, but he sustained bruised ribs on this play and would not return to action for the remainder of the postseason. Earlier in the game, the Steelers lost the services of running back Rocky Blyer with a toe injury. He too would not play for the remainder of the postseason. Despite these key injuries, Pitt's offense didn't miss a beat. Number 33, Frenchie Fuqua, did some damage with 80 total yards. And number 46, Reggie Harrison added 60 total yards of offense along with two touchdowns. Backup center Ray Mansfield scored the last point in this 40-14 Steelers win.
1975, the Rams were humiliated 37-7 by the Cowboys in the playoffs. And that game was played at L.A. So how would they fare at Dallas this year? The Rams' Jack Youngblood had a good idea. Each team's defense made big plays in the defense-dominated first half. The hits kept coming. Tempers flared. Rams quarterback Pat Hayden left the World Football League's Southern California Suns team halfway through the 1975 season so that he could report to Oxford as a Rhodes Scholar. Chartley Waters blocked this punt. And the teams ended up exchanging one-yard touchdown runs, with the score being Rams 14, Cowboys 10. Charlie Waters was at it again. Needing a touchdown to win, Roger Staubach hit Billy Joe Dupree on a fourth down and ten play. It ended up being just inches short of a first down. Rams punter Rusty Jackson had enough of Charlie Waters, so he gave the Cowboys a two-point safety, but the Rams took the 14-12 win. This was the Rams' first playoff win on the road in team history.